this is pretty much how all of the Mighty Mills uh, being shipped out will come to you in a standard medium flat rate priority mailbox. I like to send them priority because they get to you quicker. This is not how they will be packaged. They're packaged a lot better. I just have my personal one set in here. All right, so first things first. Full color detailed instructions. Pictures of that are on my eBay page and we'll look at them here in just a minute. Set those aside. Pull out the main unit where I'm doing everything one-handed. Uh, this is the foam tape for creating the seal. That's your 5 8 inch arbor connector. Hardware for connecting the grinder to the unit. Uh, and there's your connection brackets and the tool to pop out the plug for when you want to pour out your uh, powder. I've also included with each one, um, in case you want, if it's like used by a company or whatever, there is a warning label. You can put that on the unit if you wish or throw it away. Whatever, it's up to you. All right, so... Taking out the unit, again, sorry, one-handed, you can see everything comes assembled. The plug is already in place. These four screws, those are going to go, those are for a separate attachment that I'm going to be making. It's an optional thing. You don't need to have it, but I wanted to build each one so that anybody who buys one, it will easily attach to it. And basically what that's going to be is a uh, probably a tube with a screen in it and you can connect that tube into like directly into a bucket or whatever so you can just do continuous running uh, and like on your bench top or something like that so features as you can see this has my anti-kickback device there and you can take rocks and you can either push them in one at a time let that pop back and then none of the material will come shooting out. Uh, better for your eyes and then better for uh, keeping your material in the machine and not losing gold out of it. I have not ever seen a crusher with one of these until now. Uh, another thing you can do is you can actually set a rock on there and then you just lift it up and drop each one in there. You can just... This is set up for one and a half inch by one and a half inch. This grizzly bar on top that I've made helps you know keep you from putting bigger pieces of material down in there the feed tube is two by two and that drops into the body here which is three inches wide so there's plenty of room to throw quite a bit of material in there all right so real quick let's take off the cover plate here And of course, all right, cover plate off. You can see it's got the whole plug in there. All right, one of the other features why I made the Mighty Mill the way I did I have a solid three quarter inch. Let me make sure you have plenty of light. This is a solid three-quarter inch bolt that goes all the way through the back. So there is no, nothing's being altered or changed in any way. It's a solid shaft all the way through. Now, on the nut, or on the uh, head of the bolt, I have made, basically I welded nuts to give you a space to 
to allow for shackles. I have three stainless steel shackles on there. So when this monster's turning, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to eat up anything in there. So also, I designed this in the octagonal shape. Why did I do that? Well, when you have the circle design, uh, in my experience, I noticed I was getting a lot of material would just spin around in the unit. This one allows the material to come in and actually bounce around all of the different sharp angles. So what that helps do is has your material bounce around better and you get better crushing action, in my opinion. I've used both. I've used the round body style and then with this one I developed the octagonal shape. So on the back side, We've got a solid four bolt, three quarter inch pillow block bearing, which is greasable. So at any time, if you need to maintain the unit, uh, you can easily do so. All right, three mounting plates. That is for putting your grinder in three different positions. A lot of people, left-handed, right-handed, uh, they may want the unit facing one way, facing straight up, or facing the other, whatever's comfortable for you. So with my unit here, you can put it in any position you would like. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, I've got here, these are the mounting brackets. Now these go onto the back of the unit. Let's say you have your grinder here running this way. You've got one there and then the other one next to it. Now what that allows is any position. This gives you a huge range of motion as far as like mounting options and stuff like that. Uh, some grinders have a longer arbor and some have a shorter and what that does is that puts the handle hole higher, lower, um, could be farther forward, farther back. And by doing the mounting plates like this, it actually allows you to set this up for any four and a half inch grinder. I repeat, any brand four and a half inch angle grinder. Today, I'm gonna be using a brand new, cheapy Harbor Freight Drill Master $15, 110 uh, unit. Um, works with anything uh, in the pictures here Does not have to be 110. It can be battery In my instructions here, you'll see that's obviously that's a DeWalt grinder four and a half inch and that is a battery grinder So you can set this up with either or battery or 110 me personally. I like to use 110 just because uh, it you know, I don't have to worry about a battery dying um, I will use my battery for when I go to quick trips and I just want to sample like maybe one mine, one or two little spots or something like that. And I know my batteries will get me through that. No problem. Um, but if I'm going to go out and I'm going to do a lot more testing, like say you know, a handful of mines or I've got a whole route set up, what I will do is I will run a small Again, Harbor Freight little generator. I think they're like 120 bucks. Um, I'll put a link in the video right here of what I use and one of these little quick uh, Harbor Freight grinders. They work great. They last all day long. Uh, you can run, I mean, uh, eight hours easy with uh, sampling with a one with a little 110 generator um, on a on a gallon of gas. It lasts pretty much almost all day. So, all right. Give me a second and let me adjust and I'm going to go over setting up and attaching the grinder to the unit. Okay, so now let's go over setup of the Mighty Mill. Pretty easy, straightforward, as I wrote out in the directions. First thing you want to do is check for all your parts. You're going to have one 
coupling nut. That's this guy right here. This connects the mining mill to your grinder. One plug removal tool. Here's your plug removal tool. Two 3 8 bolts right there. Six 3 8 washers. Two, three, four, five, six. One two foot roll of seal tape right there. Two mounting plates. That's these guys right there. And two 3 8 wing nuts. That's these guys right there. All right. So, we already did this in the original preview, but remove step two is remove the four bolts holding the cover on using a 9 16 wrench. When it comes to you, it should just be hand tightened, so you should have no problem opening it up. Uh, set the door and the bolts aside, so we're already there. Three, make, uh, hold the axle from the inside and attach the coupler nut. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hold this axle and then we're going to attach the coupler nut. So let's take and move some of these things over. We already got everything. We counted it all. All right. So I'm going to reach inside, hold the axle, and attach the coupler nut. You don't have to tighten this down. Just hand tighten. Screw it on there. All right. Make sure to tighten the nut until fully seated against the bearing. This is the bearing. All right. So as you can see, we're good on there. Step four. Hold the grinder up to the coupler and depress the lock button on the grinder. Each grinder is different. The one that I pictured happens to be on the side. This Harbor Freight one happens to be up here on the top. So we're going to go ahead and hold the lock button. While the grinder is locked, turn the axle from the inside until the coupler is fully tightened and seated against the grinder. All right, so let's do that step. I'm going to take this handle off because we don't want that on there right now. Um, you're not going to need any of the other material that comes on a grinder. You don't need the washers and any of that stuff that are used for the cutting wheels. Uh, if you can, you should remove the uh, guard from the grinder. Um, some of them will get in the way. Let's check this one and see if it does. It looks like it's going to be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and hold the button. Uh, one thing you definitely want to make sure of, do not have your grinder plugged in while you're doing the setup. And if you're using a battery grinder, do not have the battery installed in the grinder while setting up as well. You don't want this thing to go off while you're working on it and putting it all together. because That will mess you up. All right, so we're going to lock the grinder right there. And then I'm going to screw it on. I'm going to try to get to an angle so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm basically turning that, all right? Let me set this down and do it because it's a lot easier than trying to do it one-handed. And again, it doesn't have to be anything more than hand tight. So as you can see, we are attached now. Uh, I think I am going to take this off because I'm not liking where the guard is actually getting in the way of this. So hold on one second. Let me go get a screwdriver and I'm going to take this off, the guard off. All right, so we're going to go ahead and lock the grinder locked and then we're just going to simply turn this from the inside until we're fully seated onto the grinder in the coupler in and again hand tighten all right done now that that guy's on there and in there too i noted um that not all of the grinders have the same length arbor, so you may see some threads sticking out. It just all depends on the arbor length on your grinder that you're, that you're using. All right, now go ahead and choose the position 
that's best suited for you. Whatever you want to use the easiest. I'm going to go with this direction, but you can set it up like this, or you can also set it up that way. So I'm going to go ahead and set it up this way. Easiest thing I found is go ahead and just lay it down flat. Okay. Begin attaching the bracing brackets with the 3 8 bolts, washers, and wing nuts provided. Hand tighten only and line up with the grinder handle hole. What I'm talking about is this, where your grinder handle goes. You want this to line up nicely with these brackets. The good thing here, the reason I made this like I did, is because you can go ahead and you can use these outside, inside, on top of, whatever you need to do to get this at a good angle on there so that it's nice and flush. I don't want, I didn't want to have to bend these at all and straight up being adjusted, I mean that doesn't work. You can see this is all centered. Even if I tried to come close it would just be way off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the washers and stuff that I have and I'm going to start setting this up. Probably it looks like I'll be on the inside and then I need to fill in a little bit of a gap. So what I'll do is probably put one or two washers here so that I can get it up against it. So let's do that. I put the washers from or the nuts from the inside so that I can have the wing nuts on the outside or the bolts in the inside. Sorry. All right. You don't have to have a washer on the inside either. The holes are perfect for these bolts. So let's do, actually let's throw one in here, like that. Go ahead and attach those wing nuts. Again, you're just putting these on real light. They don't have to be crazy yet. And then you're going to want to stick, let's see, I'm going to need, yeah, probably two more washers right there. So let's do this guy and two washers. Let's see what that looks like. And I'll move the phone and show you what I'm talking about in just a second, how you want it. Okay, I still have a gap. All right, so me, I like to make everything as even as possible. So I'm going to put three washers on the inside there. And let's take this one off and add one more in there. And that should give us our good position. And once you have this set up for your grinder, you're going to be, you're, you're always going to know what you, how many washers where, and what's the best setup. So, you know, I mean, at least the versatility exists in this tool to where you can set it up with any grinder and you can change it at any time. All right, the other thing I like too, I developed this so that you can put, if you want this part, if you find out that it's in your way, you can put it this direction or you can have it this direction. This grinder the switch is right here, so it's not going to really interfere with the, the bracing brackets being on this side. Alright, now let me grab the phone real quick so I can show you this. Alright, so what I'm talking about is when you've got your washers and your spacing all set up, get that to focus, you want it to be flush with the grinder. You don't want the grinder and this brackets to be farther apart or you're bending the brackets to fit the washers or to fit the uh, the angle of the grinder, the handle hole. All right, so now that we've got this set up roughly, I'm going to go ahead and take my grinder handle, put that guy in there. Sorry, trying to do this one-handed. So we're going to put him in there. Same thing, just finger. Finger tight, nothing crazy. As you can see, just real gentle. Closes up nice. Now you can start tightening that guy and the bottom one. Um, I don't have a wrench with me, but I'm going to go ahead and just do these finger. I'll get them down pretty good. So give me one second and let me tighten these. Okay, so now you can see we got everything tightened. I just used a crescent wrench to hold on to the back bolt, tighten those, and then tighten the handle. And you can see we're we're solid. All right. Next step. 
got everything aligned. And then seven was install this, the handle. All right, we are now on stand, uh, step eight. Stand the crusher up and begin installation of the foam sealing tape. It is only necessary to apply to the main octagon shape for proper dust control. I'll show you what I mean. We go ahead and we stand him up. This is your main octagon shape. When I'm saying put the, the foam tape on the main shape, main octagon shape, it's this inner one. This is going to be the part that where any of the dust can escape from. So you can put it on this out, the full outside corners if you want, but that's not really necessary. So I usually just start in the top, and then I'll just wrap it around slowly and nicely, and then finish it off right there. I want this to be one continuous piece because then that limits how much, how many little tiny gaps or spaces there might be for the dust to escape out of the seal tape. So, and going over everything as well, this is standard seal tape that you can get at Home Depot, uh, Lowe's, whatever, any hardware store. It's just your regular window sealing tape. Um, I went with this thinner. I believe this is 3 8 by 3 16 thick. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but you could take this with you and you can find it. It literally comes in just a big roll like this. Um, so this unit comes with two feet, which is plenty to go around this. And let's get that put on there now. You want to make sure you don't stretch it too much because when you stretch it and pull it trying to you know make more out of it you're just going to end up uh, thinning it out in that one spot and i just line it up with the outside edge as much as i can i don't care if there's anything on the inside See, this stuff bends real easy. There's usually no issues with getting it on there. It's pretty forgiving too at first, you know. Uh, you can take it off and move it around if you have to. Uh, once it's on, this stuff lasts quite a while. Um, in my other models, my own ones before I started making production units, um, I'd probably get you know, a couple months worth or so, depending on how often I used it. All right, and like I said, this stuff is dirt cheap. I want to think a roll of, oh, geez, I think it's like 30, no, 75 feet or something like that. It costs like just a couple bucks. All right, I'll go ahead and cut it. Rest aside, go ahead and butt these up real nice. And there we go. There's your seal tape. All right. Step nine reinstall cover door with the four bolts and tighten with a 916 wrench. And you're ready to crush. All right, so let's put the door back on. Again, another thing that I 
because I wanted to try to make this so, I mean, if any parts sort of wear out or anything like that, little stuff, you can pick them up at your hardware store. The foam sealer. Um, the shackles that are in there, they're just stainless steel 516 shackles. If you want, you can go on eBay if you want more, and I think they're like a couple bucks. They sell them at Home Depot, too. They're a couple dollars per shackle. Um, also, with this hole plug, this is just a standard one-inch hole plug. Um, I opted for this. I built my original unit a couple years ago, and I went with sort of the same style that everybody else has, where uh, you would, you know, you can either pour stuff out the spout, or you'd have to take off the door. I didn't like that, and it got really annoying doing it over and over again. So that's why I decided to take this model and put in this one-inch plug. And I have the one-inch plug positioned at the bottom of the crushing unit. So this even, you can replace this. This is obviously a standard paint can opener. But what I did is I filed the end of this to a sharper point. Now you could take this, when you're done crushing, you take this guy, and this is in the instructions as well. You just take that guy right on there, and you pry him right off. Boom. Now you can pour out all your stuff, all your crushed powder. Um, with these, standard one-inch plugs. You can get these, like I said, at Home Depot. A couple bucks or something a piece. Uh, if you feel that this is starting to get loose, all you got to do is take on these tabs, and you go ahead and you just pry them open a little bit. And then it'll be real tight again. So when you get ready to crush, just push that in there. Push it in real good and tight because you don't want that popping out. That's why I said if it gets loose, make sure you just pull those fingers apart and make it tight again. All right. Let's go ahead and tighten these up real quick. They don't have to be crazy either. You just do these. All you're really doing is you're just squishing that seal, that dust seal. Now, of course, it's not going to be 100% dust free, but I think it helps a lot compared to some of the other units that are out there. Alright, just put the brake in this. Good. 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 Alright, we are ready to run. I'm going to go ahead and set my opener aside. And I'm going to go turn on my generator and get that running, and then we're going to crush the material. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so before I start crushing, I want to go over a couple things. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me, um, how fine will it crush the material? Um, this works pretty much the same as far as crushing-wise as all the other crushers out there. Um, uh, there's too many to name. Um, different kinds of small ones, compact ones, uh, even some that use same thing with a battery or a 110 grinder. Um, so the secret to getting a finer powder if you want is literally once you have the material in there, just you want to basically like shake it around a little bit, you know, and that's going to allow the material, anything that's settled in there to bounce around more and basically grind more to make it finer. Uh, also, one of the things I wanted to go over was uh, if you are worried about a certain size screening of material or whatever, I just bring a screen with me. This is a standard 10 mesh, nothing big deal. You can get these anywhere. Um, and I usually will throw my material, once I pop my lid, I'll throw it down into here and then I can sift everything out down to the size that I want. Anything that didn't get crushed go through uh, down to the size I want, I can go ahead and pull it out of there and send it right back through the unit for a second time. Um, but generally what I do is I just leave stuff in there and I'll shake the unit around and allow the material to bounce around a little bit more and stay in there a few seconds longer. So, um, and before we get going, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a couple different samples here. Uh, this is, here. well, here's this is a good example. This is almost like a uh, it's a quartz uh, very small quartz vein deposit where it's mostly like scarn and you know it could be like pretty rich or whatever uh, deposit they're usually not very thick 
and breaking it apart it's I'd say this is probably about 15 feet below the surface so it really crumbles apart pretty easy you don't get the huge pieces of quartz um, like in some vein material you break apart you know you're gonna get big pieces of quartz or whatever so for this sample I've got that material um, I'll probably feed that in with like a cup or something like that and just lift now by lifting by me holding this open that will allow a little bit of extra material to come shooting out the top or whatever this is mainly designed for pushing a rock in letting it close or like I said put a rock on there and lift it and drop it and let it close but I mean if you want to you can stick some kind of a funnel or whatever feed or hold it open and pour material in if you want but just know that the, the kickback the anti kickback device is not going to work if you do that so anyway this is some vein material just regular quartz vein material I liked it was real vuggy and uh, I like the way that looked so I'm gonna check that um, I'm not really gonna pan any of this stuff down because this is more of a demonstrational video on how the mighty mill does uh, crushing materials but I do have a bunch of that that I will actually pan and check out later I plan on making a few different kinds of videos um, different materials being crushed and stuff like that as well as locations um, mostly all over Nevada some in Oregon some in California um, when I do those videos I'll actually drive to the place show you on uh, Google Earth exactly where I'm at and uh, so that and what my test results were so that if you guys want to check those places out yourself or go get it I mean there's so much free gold just sitting out there it's it's crazy um, and that's the beauty of these crushers is when you have this you don't just walk up to these old mines and stuff and look at the tailings pile and go oh wow this this piece looks nice and I wonder if there's anything in it and then you just walk away with this you can just set up you know I usually sit in the back of my truck just set it up crush find out right then and there is this place worth my time or not um, also from this particular location I'm at we've got all sorts of different material but Here's another little, um, it's another little quartz vein I found about four inches wide. It was a prospect. It looked like they checked it out and they weren't, they didn't get, they didn't get any numbers that they liked out of it. But still, I'm interested. You can see right there. It's real, it's pretty neat inside and I'm going to have to check it out. A little bit of crystal -y formation there. It is quartz, but it's weird. It's sort of like a, almost like a fibrous, a little bit more softer. And it breaks apart in real sharp little softer pieces. It's not super soft. I mean, I can't just break it. But, you know, it is it is a little softer than your standard, like this stuff is. Or that material there, which is just gen general quartz vein material. And then this stuff here is all quartz as well. But pulled off of the... This is all just lying on the surface. So... There's some older ones in here. You can tell they've been weathered for a little bit. Like this guy. I'm in a dry wash area next to an old mine. And some of the other materials that I grabbed are materials that this place is known for. I've got a couple of different pieces of granite. As well as marble. So we'll crush those up. Some limestone and some sediment material. Crush those up, see how those do. And the ever annoying, if you've ever done it by hand, you know, quartzite. Much different than crushing quartz. Quartzite is very, very hard and does not like to crush. So I've actually never crushed it in the Mighty Mill. So today's going to be a test. And then I've had people ask me about glass. Yes, you can crush glass with this unit. Crushes glass actually quite easy. So, alrighty, um, I checked the unit. We're all tightened up and everything's ready to go. Uh, let me set the camera up. And like I said, what I'm basically gonna do is feed material in. I'll pull the plug, pour it out. You know, show you how show you how the unit does or whatever. And then we'll move on to a different one. I'm gonna go through 
I really want to get to this one just because I'm interested, but I want to make sure the unit is clean before I do that one. The rest of these, I'm not going to clean it out. So generally, if you're, you know, mining or whatever, and you're actually interested in an area, you don't want to cross-contaminate your samples. So you would run this material through the mill, but then you're going to want to take off your bolts and wipe the machine out. Um, I mean, you're not going to get crazy, but, you know, wipe it out real good. I usually just use like a dust uh, or a little one-inch paintbrush or whatever and just dust it out, get all the dust out. Because you don't want to cross-contaminate your samples. But today, for general display purposes, we're just going to crush, pour out, crush, pour out, and repeat. And I'll get to each one of these. So, all right. Well, let's get started. Okay, hopefully everything will be good audio-wise. Uh, you can probably hear I got the generator running in the background. But when I turn this on, it's probably going to be pretty loud. So, um, and I got to say it, make sure you wear eye, hearing, and breathing protection when operating the unit. All right, um, let's start with the quartz vein material that I was interested in. a little bit so all your stuff doesn't come out right away. And Plug, make sure it's good. Go ahead and wipe that and put your plug back in for the next run. Make sure that's in there real good. Alright. Let me grab. 
grab the camera here. Alright, so you can see. I mean, well, there's the stuff that didn't. And even then, so I just sprinkled that stuff on top. But I mean, you're talking, I mean, that's just powder. And the longer you leave it in there and shake the unit like I was doing, the finer it'll be. But I mean, that's a pretty good, if anybody's familiar with these pans, these are those little smaller pans, but I mean, I just filled that thing up and ran that pile of quartz that I had. Now, I didn't run these pieces because I wanted to show you these, yes, they will fit in this way, but you really shouldn't put those in like that. Try to break them down a little bit more because down here, you don't want this to come in and get clogged in the uh, feed tube. I'm not worried about it going into the machine and getting broken up. That's not the problem. And chances are it might just go down, go in there and get crushed up. But, I mean, like this one's just a little bit bigger. Same thing. Yes, it will fit this way, but it could get lodged in the feed tube. Now, if that happens, all you got to do is unplug the machine, take the door off and reach in there with a screwdriver or whatever and pry it out. But save yourself a lot of heartache and headache and just go ahead and make sure your material is down to around inch and a half so that it fits on there nicely goes in there nice and smooth and you have no problem like I said this is an inch and a half grizzly on the top but it's a two inch feed tube so there's plenty of room for that one and a half inch material to fall down in there I believe most other machines the biggest they can operate is one and a quarter feed tube but that one and a quarter inch feed tube on the units I've, I've seen out there that's it if you put exactly one and a quarter they usually have that little neck that you got to bend it's going to get lodged in there so you got to put some pretty small stuff in there usually like three quarter or no bigger than one inch this will take one and a half and sometimes even a little bit bigger depending on size so, I mean, that's bigger than an inch and a half, but this isn't very long, so this will go in there no problem. All right, um, I guess all I'm really going to do now is crush up each one. I'll set the camera up, and I will crush up these other two, and I'll crush up some of these guys. Like I said, quartz, marble, some limestone and sedimentary rock, and quartzite. That's going to be the fun one. I'm re really curious to see how it does. And then uh, glass, because I know a lot of people want to crush glass. So, alrighty, give me a minute. I'm going to set up the camera, and then we're just going to run through these. All right, let's start off first with that softer quartz, sort of like fibrous I was talking about earlier. Let's do this guy.
But remember, like I said, if you're going to be running different veins of material, you do not want to cross contaminate. So, unless you're running a bunch of one material, you're going to want to go ahead and take the door off and clean the unit.
All right, we just did our last little run. So I'm gonna leave the plug out. I wanna take this apart now. And let's check out how the inside did. I'm sure you noticed in a lot of the different crushes I did, pretty much every one, um, I really like the fact that I can set material on there and just flip that lid and it falls down and the lid goes right, right up right away. You saw sometimes here and there I, I actually opened it, dropped it down there and you see stuff fly up right away. But if you just push that material down in there and let that lid close, or set it on top and just give it a flip. It works great. Keeps everything inside the machine. I mean, as you can tell, there's not a ton of dust that comes out of it, but it's not, you know, some does come out. Uh, mostly the stuff that's coming out is, I mean, micro, micro, fine. That's the importance of why you need to wear a mask. You do not want to breathe that stuff in. Look up silicosis. It's not fun. Or a miner's cough, as they call it. All right. So the generator's off. Don't worry. I still have the uh, grinder hooked up. Now this gets stuck sometimes on the foam. Today it's pretty hot out, so there we go. I left a little bit of the glass in there from earlier. But I mean, you can see how good that tape does. Pretty much keeping all of the material in there as far as dust wise goes. And we're looking good. Everything's still. Shackles are still beautiful. You're going to want to go ahead and work them. There's a little bit of material that gets caught in there, dust or whatever. That's just natural. That'll do it on any grinder that has moving parts like that. And we're good. Looks like a rock in there, man. Let's take a closer look. Alright, I try not to put my hand in front of it, but it doesn't always work like that. Alright, so, you see, shackles are still good. It's funny too, look on the one side. This is the side that swings down and hits the material. It's sort of dull because the obviously the uh, the shine is gone from it, the polish, and uh, the the back side is still shiny. So um, with these, uh, it is note or to take note. I do have. I do not foresee the axle wearing out ever. It's like I said, three quarter inch solid steel. Um, shoulder bolt and that directly fits into the arbor for the coupling to the grinder um, and 3 16 wall steel for the unit means that this stuff where it gets beat up the most that's never going anywhere this is a unit that if you buy this unit you can pass this down to your kids and I guarantee they can pass it down to their kids um, the Mighty Mill, I'm so, such a firm believer that this will last, that I have a warranty. All the details and everything are on my eBay page for it. Um, basically, it's anything as far as building the unit goes. The only things that I don't warranty are, you know, the consumable portions, you know, the shackles or whatever, um, you know, the handle, the handle might break. I'm not going to warranty that. Stuff like that. Nuts and bolts, you know, your stuff like that. Um, the bearing eventually I don't know maybe after thousands of hours of use or tens of thousands I have no idea maybe the bearing will go out but if you keep up on the maintenance of it and you grease it and everything you should have this for forever you shouldn't even ever need to replace it at all and um, I'm pretty sure that the axle will last a lifetime as well but I will have extras available on my eBay page and in my store uh, for purchase if you ever wanted to have like a spare one or something like that um, And that's about it um, Please if you have any questions 
feel free to leave a comment or uh, visit my eBay page. I will put a link in the description. Um, otherwise, just go to eBay and type Mighty Mill. M-I-G-H-T-Y-M-I-L-L. -L. Mighty Mill. All right, thanks for watching.